So, you all remember this data, don't you? We saw it on the only the lonely podcast, and um, where we have a population mean of 99 and a standard uh, deviation of 13 for our population. So, we'll remember those numbers. 99 and 13 because we'll need them in just a little bit. Okay, so here's my RStudio environment. You can use R uh, or I mean R command R and R commander if you like. I'm using this because it I hope that it shows up a little bit better on the um, screen because it has a little bit of a higher contrast. So, <clears throat> all right. So let's get that data into into Excel. So I've already mapped it. So it's on sheet two, is the original data. Here's all my fancy smancy doings. Um, and you can do this through R Commander, or you can do it through um, um, the scripting language as well. So let me go ahead and and load the the Excel Connect library. And then I make a a temporary name, just call it workbook. Use the load workbook function, and then I load the workbook um, that I'm interested in. So really, all that does is it just tells R where that workbook is. Okay, so now R knows where that workbook is. <clears throat> now I need to make my new spreadsheet, and this one I'm just going to call it. I mean, my new data set, which I'm simply call ZZ and I get that by using the read worksheet function which is located in workbook which I just created and it's on sheet 2 which I showed you just a second ago I can actually load all that all sheet 1 but I'll get all these all this stuff will show up and I'll get a whole bunch of NAs and it's just kind of a mess uh, so that's why I always like to keep my my uh, a copy of my data uh, fresh and pure. So, uh, so it's on sheet two. I click run, cross my fingers. Looky, there it shows up. 108 variables. All right, that's good. Now I can get rid of this um, um, this uh, workbook because I don't need it anymore. So, I'm done with it. So. There we go. So, so that's all, all, all very good. So, um, now I need to um, d decide if my population, which I've just loaded in there, you know, m my scores from my group are the same or different than the um, population. And, and in order to do that, you saw how to do it in Excel. Uh, uh, you can do it in, in R just the same way. Uh, you have to write out the function. So let me go ahead and um, um, it's not loaded. Where where are you? Let me let me open that bad boy up. Um, looking for. saved it yet. Let me just go ahead and write a new one then. So let me go ahead and open up a new script. And the first thing that I need to do is make a function. So I'll just call this ztest fun. Uh, the fun part tells me it's a function. The Z test tells me it's a Z test. Uh, you can name that whatever you want to. I could have named it Bob if I wanted to. So then I say equals function. So I'm, I'm making a function. And then this part is is um, um, tells us what we have to put into our formula 
uh, later on once we get the the new function put together so I'll need to put in uh, my value I could have put in X there I could have put in uh, bananas there but I'm, I'm putting in a so the mean of of a uh, and then the next followed by a comma then mu which is the population mean and then SD which is the standard deviation uh, so that just tells that tells the function what to look for uh, a little later on and then I have to calculate the, the formula so uh, what I want to do is is actually uh, calculate the the standard error of the mean um, um, and then um, return that so the standard error of the mean will tell me if there is a is a difference between my mean and their mean <laughs> so uh, uh, <clears throat> so I just run that and I get this z test function in there and so um, I have to look at my, my my data here so I've got scores and zz so so let me write out my function so z test dot fun and then zz dollar sign scores comma and then my mu, my population mean was what did I say it was? 99. And the standard deviation was 13. So, and then I just hit Control R or Control Enter, and it runs it. <clears throat> and we can see I get a a. 0.084. Now, what does that tell me? Um, it tells me that um, um, the Z test is 0 0.084. Um, and going back to our our magical eight steps, the first thing we do is have to come up with a null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis. Um, in this case is that um, our scores are no different from the um, population mean and so what we see here is a score of 0.84 uh, uh, 95 percent probability on your z-scores remember would be this range between between Where's my beautiful picture? Between over here and over here. Um, so it's the range, the top range is 1.96, the bottom range is negative 0.196. So, and we can see that our output um, is uh, 0.84. So it's right in the middle of of that range so we go oh okay so it's it's it really is statistically um, no different uh, than the population so this nice little helpful hint has come to us from your friendly folks at uh oh let me go ahead and copy this rbloggers.com now they created their formula a little different they used the variance instead of the standard deviation and we we typically um, calculate the standard deviation um, anyway and qu quite often um, um, the um, variance is not reported whereas the standard deviation will be I mean if you know the standard deviation 
you can calculate the variance so that's not that big of a deal all you have to do is multiply the standard deviation by itself um, but <clears throat> so our, our critical value for a z-score at, at um, uh, 0.05 is um, a 0.196 so um, so our our value does not exceed that here is 0.84 uh, so we're good to go two thumbs up on the z-score so that's that's how we do it uh, using R so and save that oh let me t let me just let you guys go you don't need to watch me saving stuff <laughs>